Welcome to 3DS Max 2011. In this version of the software, we've taken the viewport canvas even further with the addition of significantly more advanced painting tools common to many dedicated paint packages. So I've gone back to an earlier version of the model that doesn't have any texture on it, and we're just going to take a look at viewport canvas and some of the tools and workflows. So from the tools drop down menu, I choose viewport canvas and I get the viewport canvas palette and I'm going to go ahead and dock it on the left side of the screen and now we have our workspace set up. So we're now ready to begin painting. So I'll be sure to select the object and then I click the paintbrush to enter painting mode and you can see that I get a, a selection of which maps I can paint on. We're going to choose to set up a diffuse color map and we're going to choose to set it at uh, 1024 by 1024 and we're going to go ahead and save this as a working map and I'll just overwrite one I had earlier. We'll do 24-bit, we'll turn off the alpha channel, and we're good to go. And so now it's set up our texture map for us. We're ready to begin painting. So you can see I immediately get my paintbrushes are active. I can go ahead and open up a layers dialog box that we're going to be using some layers. And I can begin painting. I'm also going to open up our colors palette. And I've gone ahead earlier and I've created a custom color palette based on the original texture map that you saw earlier. So I can begin picking from these colors to start my base painting. So I'll choose this color and you can see I can just start painting on the object. Now, clearly in this video, we're not going to be able to create an entirely complete texture because we only have a minute or so here. But the point is just to kind of show you what's going on with the tools here. So you can see that I'm painting on my unwrapped model. Now, one thing I can do to kind of speed things up is over here under paint behavior, I can turn on mirroring X and Y, and you can see I'm painting on both sides of the model now. So I'm just kind of laying down my base color on both sides of the model. I can alternatively also just go into 2D view where I can see all of my UVs that are laid out, and I can quickly lay down a swath of paint just to kind of get all of the UVs covered with the same basic color. So once I have that all covered up, I can just say OK there, and you can see we've quickly laid down our base color. I'm going to go ahead and add in a new layer here, and you can see that we can add and delete layers however we want to. And I'm going to start picking another color, also from my palette. And this time, instead of just doing some straight painting, I'm also going to go in and start using some of our masks. So I'm going to use a mask, and I'm going to invoke the mask preset dialog box. And we're just going to start choosing some of these kind of a skin texture start laying this down a little bit i can of course increase the brush size and just drop it down and you kind of get the point of what's going on there let's go ahead and pop in another layer and i'm going to zoom in on the face a little bit and i'm going to turn off my mask and i'm going to get a different color say the color for the horns and we're going to go ahead and start you know painting in the color of the horns here just kind of paint that in. I'll reduce my brush size a little bit. Some of that color came into here. Now, one thing we can also do, in addition to uh, working on our layers, is we can we can adjust our transfer modes, just like you could, say, in Photoshop or in any other uh, painting package. So we'll just leave those at normal for now. We can also paint with specific textures. So, for example, I can come in here and maybe get a. Uh, this is kind of a not really the right texture. Let's try a different one. Very easy to change, so we'll get this one, kind of a skinnish texture, and we'll go and get this in here. So once we start to add in detail, I'm going to go ahead and add another layer, turn this off, and I'm just going to get kind of a darker gray color, and just kind of add some detail there, and I'm going to go ahead and just overlay that. Let's try uh, lightening it. There we go. Okay, lightening it up for that. We can do some other interesting things with render surface maps. I'm going to open up render and I'm going to find my render surface map. And we're going to get the change our bitmap size here. We're going to render an occlusion map, which is new to 3ds Max 2011. And here's my occlusion map. And I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to copy the image, close it. And now when I go to a new layer, I can choose paste from clipboard and you can see that our ambient occlusion map is now overlaid directly on top of our model. Of course I can use my transfer mode and I can adjust the opacity to help tweak it a little bit. I can also use some of the built-in filters like either blur or I can do the adjustments like brightness 
and a contrast, and we'll say okay there. Now we'll do a little bit of a blur, bring it down there. So you can see that we can very quickly begin to add detail and, and high quality editing directly onto our model within 3ds Max 2011. So now that we've got the basics of our texture map started, maybe we want to move it over to another image editing or painting package to finish it off. I can go File, Save PSD, and this saves us, uh, allows us to save our uh, file as a PSD file that can be used in any of our paint packages. We'll put away our render surface map, and you can see that using Viewport Canvas in 3ds Max 2011 really is a significant advance in the ability to paint directly on your models with high quality painting tools that can be transported to virtually any painting package for further refinement.